Impressionism was an explosive movement during a time of innovation. Within a continually changing and evolving world of technology, artists were able to adapt to this change and create an entirely new movement full of creativity. Impressionism emerged from this new age of technological advances, and the artistic world would never be the same. Through looking at the changes that Impressionism made in the world, we can see how it gave way to modern art in a modern world. In the 1800s, an invention later known as a camera obscura was made to be portable, and photographers could take portraits of people with ease. Portraits were previously a job mostly done by artists, so this left the art community striving for new work. Instead of painting portraits of people with demands for every brushstroke, artists were free to paint whatever they chose. Now enters another new technological invention, the paint tube. In previous years, artists labored to mix their own paints in their studio and could not easily transport their tools outside of their studio. With this new invention in 1841, artists had the ability to bring their studio wherever they went, even outdoors. An entire world of possibilities for new painting subjects was opened up to the art world. Enter Claude Monet and his buddies, Alfred Sisley and Pierre Renoir. In the 1860s, these artists banded together to unknowingly create an entirely new artistic movement. Mockers of the movement called this small group of artists the Impressionists. The rightly named Impressionists liked this name and accepted it, coining the term Impressionism. This Impressionistic movement was full of color and visible brushstrokes, and the artists embraced their new art outdoor surroundings. With these new surroundings came lots of lively, real-world topics for them to paint. Here is a painting Monet worked on in the Saint-Lazare station. At the time, Paris was going through a reconstruction process, and this became a major theme in the Impressionist artwork. An interesting part of Impressionism that separates it from movements beforehand is the focus on the texture of the painting itself, rather than the realistic qualities of their art. The brushstrokes are visible, the colors are brighter than life, the paintings look like they came from a dream. Instead of making a realistic depiction of the scene before him, Monet blurs the edges of his subjects, giving us a subtle yet emotional look at the world around him. Now look at this artwork by Impressionist Edgar Degas, a portrait of his very good friend and fellow painter, Mary Cassette. In this painting, Degas completes the same blurred lines and dreamy look as Monet, except this time the subject is a person. It was interesting enough for the world to see what an impressionistic technique would look like in landscape paintings. Now they were able to see the style used on a human. Notice how the outlines of Mary's features are more suggested than actually outlined. See the subtle darker colors used for the outside of her nose, the details of her face? Notice how the brush strokes surrounding her are very defined and we can exactly see each movement of Degas's brush. Here is a painting by Renoir called Two Sisters on the Terrace. Notice the bright colors. They almost look saturated. Renoir focused on bold strokes within his paintings, as you can see in the detail. The brush strokes add texture as well. Impressionists took every stride to evoke emotion in their paintings. So how does this artwork make you feel? Happy? Calm? Curious? What the Impressionists may not have known was how much their work would affect the art world in the years afterwards. The moment they stepped outside of their studios to paint, they began paving a path towards modern art. Towards the end of the 19th century, the Impressionist art exhibits dwindled towards their last showing in 1886. However, the artists had already proven to have made quite the impression on the world. After this last exhibition, an era of post-Impressionism dawned upon the art world. However, unlike the ragtag group of Impressionists, 
the post-impressionism artists preferred to work on their own. While a few were friends with each other, the artists in post-impressionism tended to rely on their own individual styles. Take Paul Cezanne, for example, often credited with beginning the movement and bridging the gap between Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. Here is his painting, titled Boy in the Red Vest. In this work, you can see a few aspects of Impressionism. Blurred lines, broad brushstrokes. Not a hyper-realistic painting, much like Impressionism. However, the major difference here is the focus on mainly color and the symbolic nature. This painting is not meant to portray what we see, but rather, what we feel. Now, look at this painting by well-known artist Vincent van Gogh. Recognize it? Perhaps one of his most famous works, The Starry Night, is often what people think of when they imagine post-impressionism. Rather than showing us exactly what he saw that night, Van Gogh evokes emotion and feeling through his colors and his texture. We are feeling the scene rather than seeing it with our naked eye. But how does all of this lead to modern art? Impressionism and post-impressionism were the gateway to modernism. Take a look at another painting by Paul Cezanne. Notice something about the shapes he used in this work? That's right, they are mostly square. As you may have guessed by now, Cezanne was an early inventor of cubism. This painting, titled Chateau Noir, is an example of the early development of modernism in the 20th century. From this point onward, artists focused on innovations and new ideas within their art. Post-Impressionism developed into multiple movements during this era, including Fauvism. This work by famous Fauvist artist Henri Matisse depicts this change. Titled Open Window and created in 1905, this painting features the brightest colors that people had seen in a garden scene at this point in history. We can also see art moving more towards minimalism in this piece. At this point, we can tell that art is becoming more about emotion and color than depicting real life. It was like a dream world for some and crazy for others. Now this artwork is from the Expressionism Movement by artist Franz Marc, titled The Large Blue Horses. Just look at the colors on this magnificent piece. Now watch the evolution of artworks from this point forward. See a pattern? A diversion from our reality into the artist's reality. And now we have fully dived into modernism. In 1917, Piet Mondrian created Composition with Color Fields, a riveting painting full of shapes and colors. At this point, we see a full devoid from reality and a major focus on only colors. Minimalism is key here. What should we learn from all of this? What is the accomplishment? Humans are full of curiosity. Humans strive to explore new things. If it hasn't been done already, there's a very good chance that humans are trying to do it. Through this evolution of art, we can see evidence of just that. Artists were presented with technology and advancements. Instead of returning to the old ways of art, they moved forward. The Impressionists, who were only a small group of people, accomplished a lifetime of art exploration. They looked to the future and created that future. In the end, we can look back at their art and feel as if we know them. We feel their emotions, their desires, their joys and frustrations simply by seeing their creation. Isn't that what art is all about? <laughs>